Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Sorry, it's been a few weeks, I would say, almost a month. Just before I get into the video, I did get a strike on my channel, so I was working through that. And here we are, we're back. So in today's video, what we're gonna be talking about is some mistakes, some common mistakes that people make when they're trying to break into cybersecurity, or maybe even into IT. Just, I have a few written down and how we can try to avoid these problems and avoid these uh, incidents, right? So before we get into it, please like, subscribe, and share, you know the drill. And um, so the number one thing that I would say is not become a jack of all trades, right? Don't try to know it all. If you try to know it all early on, like I wanna learn web app pen testing, I wanna learn network pen testing, I wanna learn API pen testing, cloud pen testing, the whole shebang, you're gonna go down a rabbit hole and you're not gonna be a master of none. That's just a word of advice for me. So for example, like I wanted to be an ethical hacker, I wanted to be a pen tester, I wanted to be that like, or network security, you know, consultant, whatever you want to call us, right? And say, for example, I want to become, or I want to try to become a SOC analyst. I want to try to be a web app guy. Obviously, that's no good, right? Just have your, like your, your, your specific uh, niche that you want to do and focus on that. And you can branch out after that. That's the number one thing that I would say, avoid being a jack of all trades, right? So the number two thing I have written down here is you know, a totally misconception about cyber is, <clears throat> and this is something that I would, you know, I used to do myself. I used to think like, okay, cybersecurity, when you think cybersecurity, you just think about attacking, red teaming, hacking, pen testing, et cetera. That is not the truth, right? The truth is cybersecurity is such a broad, broad field, right? You have, which I hate, right? Policies, frameworks, you can, do GRC, uh, government's uh, risk and compliance. You could do blue teaming. You can do forensic. You can, you know, it, it's endless. You can just Google cybersecurity jobs or cybersecurity industries, and you'll see a whole boatload of, uh, of different kinds of tactics and different kinds of tasks you can take on as a cybersecurity expert. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. I don't want this video to be so long. I just want to get back, you know, show my face saying welcome back and just throw a little something out there uh, that I had written down over the weekend. So this is another one that, you know, mis people make mistakes and I did it early on too. These are things that I failed to do. Um, I think I've said this in early videos or maybe on podcasts on other people's channels. I didn't like to network with people, right? I didn't like people knowing who I was. I was the total opposite that I am now. Like before I would Go on a camera if you paid me a trillion dollars, right? I didn't want to network. I didn't want people to know who I was, and I'd rather be anonymous and under the radar. I didn't like people knowing who I was. So, failing to network is is a, is a mistake, right? So, like I said, I didn't market myself. I didn't put myself out there. I didn't ask for help. I didn't do any of that stuff early on. Now, I like when people share my videos. I like when people share my content on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, or whatever platform I'm on just so that you guys can, uh, you can see it, it's visible, and you guys can learn from it as well, right? So the community that we have here is such a welcoming community in cyber. You know, I can't speak on any other thing, uh, any other field or any other uh, space, but cyber, we're, you know, we're super welcoming. So reach out. If you have any questions, you know, you can reach out to me. I don't know it all, but I think I know enough to maybe guide you in the right direction, and I know a lot of people. Right. So that's number three, right? Failing to network with folks and, and putting yourself out there. And the fourth one here that I have is imposter syndrome, right? That we can go down a pitfall, right? Don't let imposter syndrome hold you back from applying for jobs, uh, letting hiring managers meet you, uh, learning new things. There's, you know, whether you're a good fit or not, apply for that job, right? And what I found was we can't learn it all on one single thing, one single go. But you know, if you take a little piece of the pie every single day, 
you put a piece of that puzzle in that puzzle that you do every single day, sooner or later that puzzle is going to grow and you're going to put that full puzzle together, right? That's, I don't even know, I just came up with that. But yeah, that's the number four. And the fifth one I have here is the certifica certification overload, right? This is another thing I had in my earlier career, right? I thought, you know, learning about Microsoft and Cisco, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, SonicWall, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on about all the technologies I've learned over the years. It's like, if I learn it, like I still, I still hold my, my word for this, but if I'm going to learn something, you know, it's not as hungry as I was when I was 25, right? Because life happens, I have family and I have all this other stuff going on in my life. But say, for example, I'm going to learn about VMware. It, this is a, a true story. Like I learned about VMware, learning about configuring vCenter, vSphere, ESXi servers, DRS, and all this other stuff that if you're a cybersecurity person, you may not even know what the hell I'm talking about. But that's fine. So what I did, I went to do my VCA, which is VMware Certified Associate, I believe, and then the VCP, VMware Certified Professional and Data Center Virtualization. When I did these certifications, I did it only because I was working in that niche. I was working as a VMware, a cloud engineer, a virtualization engineer, whatever you want to call us. Today, I don't work on that, right? So my VCP doesn't do me any justice today, right? I don't, I don't have any use for that VCP anymore. Yes, I have a VMware server uh, on that side, but you can't really see it because it's low. I do run ESXi with EVNG, GNS3, and some other stuff, a little beefy server. But well, that's just for my side things to, it's nothing to do with, with here. But um, yeah, focusing too much on certifications can go down a bit pitfall. Like I said, I did that. You know, you don't need every single CompTIA cert, like A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, Linux+, plus, you know, Project+, plus, and all the pluses, or CEH, CHFI, ECSA, or LPT, and CISSO, and whatever, whatever all the other ones from, or Cisco, or or the offset ones or whatever, you know, remember, focus, you know, if you want to get to cyber, do your security plus, maybe EMP, it all depends on what route you want to go, you know, blue team, red team, like I said, the, the sky's the limit, right? So focus on your niche and then get your niche down really well, right? Like mine is networking and network and systems and network and systems pen testing, right? You give me a web app, yeah, I can probably tinker with it, but it's not my niche, right? So yeah, you don't need any, you know, you don't need every single certification, you know, obviously sometimes it's security plus, even CEH, I know people dog on the CEH, it's not about the actual skill that you're learning, it's about getting that cert for the gatekeeper to get into your interview, and get into the, you know, into the organization, because people hold that certified ethical hacker certification, you know, dear to their heart for, for whatever reason. Are you going to learn how to really become a hacker? No. I have the CEH. When I got my CEH, I still didn't know shit, right? It's the God honest truth. I didn't know nothing after I got my CEH. I knew how to use Nmap. I knew how to use some tools that they taught us. And I did my CEH in uh, 2013. So it's been like 10 years ago. So the moral of the story is don't get a cert just because. Get a cert because it's needed for your job and to be better. Like I have taken over a hundred exams. I'm not lying. I have my friend Devin was here last week and he made a joke. Like he was sleeping in my spare room and I had a, you know, a stack full of certs that, you know, I took off my wall. It was in my other house because I don't really, you know, I'm not going to showcase all my Cisco or my Palo Alto, you know, the stuff, the Juniper stuff that I did in my earlier career, because it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't make sense now. Right. So so if you if you've made any of these mistakes, you know, hopefully you can fix them. Put the comments in the, you know, you know, leave a comment below. And you know, if you like the video, share it with people. If you have any uh, insight of what I said, if you disagree or agree, whatever, just give me your feedback. I would love to know your feedback and sharing is caring. So welcome back. I'm I'm really glad that I'm back and hopefully I can put out some more cool content this week. And uh yeah, until next time, guys, please like, subscribe, and share. And have a beautiful day and a beautiful week and uh, take good care.